All right, so in this next module, we're going to do a little bit of practice using the colon and dash to uh, merge a couple of sentences. And I'm going to kind of lead you through these practice examples. But as I've mentioned before, if you have extra time and you really want to test yourself and really reinforce some of these concepts, it's always a, a good idea to pause the video after I've shown the example and try to edit it on your own. Try to see how you'd use the colon and dash. And then you can rejoin the video and kind of compare to what I did. If you don't have time to do that, that's fine too. You could just watch it right through it, and, and that's uh, uh, good practice as well. So we're going to start with an example here. And we're going to use uh, the colon in this example uh, to help draw two sentences together, make it into one sentence. And I'll give you some reasons why that's useful here. So it says, evidence-based medicine teaches clinicians the practical application of clinical epidemiology as needed to address specific problems of specific patients. It guides clinicians on how to find the best evidence relevant to a specific problem, how to assess the quality of that evidence, and perhaps most difficult, how to decide if the evidence applies to a specific patient. So, you can notice some things about this sentence, right? So you can see that there's a little bit of, or these two sentences, you can see there's a little bit of repetition. So evidence-based medicine teaches clinicians. And then that's the first sentence. And then the second sentence starts, it guides clinicians on how to find. So you can see right away that there's a little bit of repetition. And I talked about a couple weeks ago this idea, and I'm going to get back to this at the end of this week as well. This idea that uh, you can kind of imagine that the writer was working on this and they got to that second sentence and they said, oh, well, I already said teaches clinicians and I don't want to repeat myself. I'm going to talk about uh, repetition a little bit at the end of the, the week, uh, this week. So he says, I don't want to, he or she says, I don't want to repeat myself. So I'm going to go to the thesaurus and find another word that means teaches but isn't, you know, it's a synonym for teaches. So you can imagine this person going to the thesaurus and saying, oh, well, guides. Oh, that's good. Okay, let me stick in guides. So it guides clinicians. All right, we changed the word. We, whew, we avoided that repetition. Okay, so um, as I mentioned before, I want you to really pay attention when you're writing. And if you find yourself doing that, ask yourself the question as to whether or not you need the second instance of that word at all, that word that you're trying to avoid repeating. So this is one of those cases where you actually don't need it. We don't need the guides clinicians at all because really we can join these two separate sentences into a single sentence and just have teaches clinicians X, Y, and Z and get rid of the uh, guides clinicians altogether. So that's one thing to notice about this passage. Uh, another thing to notice about this passage is the second sentence is actually a list of things, right? How to find the best evidence, how to assess the quality, how to decide if the evidence applies. So you've got a list here, and again, as I mentioned, a colon is a good way to set up a list. So perhaps we can, you know, use the colon here to set up that list and draw this all into a single sentence. And then we've got some wordiness here, right? Um, you get this in that first sentence, you get uh, as needed to address specific problems of specific patients. So that's saying, okay, well, evidence-based medicine is about, you know, addressing specific problems of specific patients. Okay, well, that's very vague, right? So when I read that, I don't really get a lot out of that. I don't know exactly what they mean by that. You get to that second sentence, however, and they get back to the specific problems and specific patients, but now they give you specifics about uh, what they mean. Oh, it's about, you know, uh, assessing evidence and things like that. So, in fact, that first sentence is a vague way of stating the second sentence. So, again, we just really don't need anything. Uh, you know, if you want to delete some stuff here, it's going to be very easy to delete some stuff because there's a lot of stuff here that we really just don't need. So um, evidence-based medicine teaches clinicians the practical application of clinical epidemiology. Uh, we could get rid of all this very general vague thing and get rid of this it guides clinicians, right? And just put a colon here and set up that list. How to find, how to assess, and how to decide, right? So that's a really good use of the colon. Now there's some other words here and there that we can probably drop and trim up this uh, passage a bit, but that's the gist of it, the gist of using the colon to draw this into a single sentence. So here's my joining and condensing. Evidence-based medicine teaches clinicians the practical application of clinical epidemiology, how to find the best evidence relevant to a specific problem, how to assess the quality of that evidence, and how to decide if the evidence applies to a specific patient. And you might notice that there is even probably a little bit more we could edit out of this sentence. 
uh, when I edited this for the author, they wanted to make that point about that it was applying clinical epidemiology. So I left that in. But the, you know, the practical application of clinical epidemiology is somewhat wordy. So you could probably even go further on this sentence and edit it one more step and just say evidence-based medicine teaches clinicians how to find the best evidence, how to assess it, how to decide. Uh, and notice if you make that further edit, you actually can drop the colon altogether because what then comes before the colon is no longer an independent clause. It, in other words, it doesn't, can't stand on its own. So we really don't even need the colon anymore. So just evidence-based medicine teaches clinicians how, and you can go right into that list. All right, now a second example. Uh, this one we're gonna use the dash to practice uh, kind of bringing two sentences together with a dash. So this one reads, finally the lessons of clinical epidemiology are not meant to be limited to academic physician epidemiologists who sometimes have more interest in analyzing data than caring for patients. Clinical epidemiology holds the promise of providing clinicians with the tools necessary to improve the outcomes of their patients. All right, so as you're reading that one along, you'll notice a couple of things. So one, we've got this kind of long description who sometimes have more interest in analyzing data than caring for patients. And that long descriptive clause is kind of just thrown in there. Uh, it might even be a little offensive to some, but I'm going to go with what the authors, you know, the message the authors are trying to make. So uh, this is the descriptive clause that you could actually set off by dashes. You could set that off by dashes and use that to connect the first uh, part of the, se the sentence with the, the entire second sentence. And notice that also when you go from that first sentence to the second sentence, there's, there's no transition there and it really is very abrupt. It's kind of like a shift and you're, it's a little confusing. And so you can get rid of the need for a transition there by drawing this all into one sentence. So we could set this off with dashes like that and kind of get rid of the separation of the two sentences. And then there's a lot of things that you can notice in a sentence that could be fixed. Um, obviously, if I have clinical epidemiology here and clinical epidemiology here, I'm going to be able to, uh, you know, cross out the clinical epidemiology in the second use of it because I don't, I'm over two sentences. Uh, now it's a single sentence, I don't need to repeat it. You notice a few other things. We get this kind of awkward phraseology are not meant to be limited to. It's a little bit awkward. Maybe we can fix that up a little bit. We get this holds the promise of providing. Well, a really short way to say holds the promise of providing is just to say provides, be direct. Um, you get provides clinicians with the tools necessary to improve. Well, how about just provides clinicians with the tools to improve? That word necessary is not necessary there. And then we get this, the outcomes of their patients. Uh, this is a case where you can get rid of a couple of words by saying instead patients with an apostrophe outcomes. So you dump a few words there. So there's a few ways we can uh, tidy this up as well as adding the dash there to join and condense. So we end up with, finally, clinical epidemiology is not limited to academic physician epidemiologists who are sometimes more interested in analyzing data than caring for patients. We're dropping in that little extra bit there, but provides clinicians with the tools to improve their patients' outcomes. So that's a lot smoother, and again, it gets the information across much more efficiently. Um, one final thought on this, I noticed that I, in the first sentence when I edited, edited this, I actually left in a knot, and I've told you to try to get rid of knots. I kind of played with this one in my head and I ended up deciding, well, the knot works okay there, and I didn't find an alternative that I liked better, but probably if I worked really hard at it, I could find a way to turn that into a positive construction, and some of you may think of one. Uh, you could do something like, finally, clinical epidemiology extends beyond academic physician epidemiologists, or something like that. There is a way to get rid of that knot. When I edited this, I actually ended up leaving it in, so just to show you that I've given you a lot of guidelines and rules, and sometimes you'll violate those and decide it's okay, uh, but there's probably a way to turn that into a positive as well. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.